thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, so uh, my name is Peter Badley, as already introduced. And this webinar is all about SharePoint data aggregation made simple. So we're going to look at the um, various data apps which QuizCom make available with a focus around list aggregation today. But I'll talk about some of the other options available as well. I'm going to start with a few slides just to set the scene. Um, largely going to be demos today, so I'll show you the end result of um, using the sort of data view apps to configure um, various examples of aggregation in SharePoint. And then we'll go through how we actually build those live in the screen. As Sarah says, feel free to ask any questions and we'll uh, respond to those at the end of the webinar today. So firstly, just a bit about the data view tools uh, which QuizCon make available. Um, so these are a set of SPFX web parts. They're all, all about retrieving and displaying data in different ways um, from information across Office 365, not necessarily just SharePoint. Um, we, they support connecting to other information, Excel data, data in the Microsoft Graph as well. And at the core of this is the Data View Plus app, which is actually made up of a series of other um, apps, which can either be bought as a whole within the Data View Plus or as individual standalone apps to solve specific problems. Whether that's the list view to display SharePoint list data in a different way, aggregator, which we're mainly going to be focusing on today to aggregate data from different data sources. Um, and then also some... Um, apps around presenting other sorts of information, whether that's images, org charts, or calendar information. And we'll have a little, little calendar as well today. Um, so how does it all work? It works based on two things. It firstly is the various data sources which can be connected to, um, SharePoint list data, SharePoint search data, Excel, and also the Microsoft Graph. So think emails, people, tasks, etc. And then they are presented um, in these SPF web, SPFX web parts um, using a sort of Lego style of builder UI. If any of you have ever played with Lego, um, got children with Lego, then you can build up these um, uh, web parts with different components, whether that's to control the layout, um, how records are grouped, how records are filtered, and also conditional formatting as well. And we'll look at each of those components during the course of the demo and how easy it is to work with. Here's a little preview of what some of the apps look like, and we'll, we'll delve into those um, pretty much straight away with a demo. Now, I was going to try and present um, and set the scene on a slide itself, but I think it's a little bit easier to actually just explain it. Uh, so in SharePoint, traditionally, we've worked with uh, a structure of sites based around a top level site collection and then a series of sub sites. And certainly there's nothing stopping you still doing that. But Microsoft are increasingly encouraging you to work with a flat structure of site collections. Maybe they're attached to an Office 365 group or a Microsoft team. And there's a real challenge around how you aggregate that data. And I'm going to focus more on that flat structure today. But do remember that if you're using subsites, exactly the same thing applies. And specifically, the challenge I'm going to look at today is around project sites. So we have a series of project sites which share common information. And then how, as an organization, we aggregate that data up into a single view for different types of list-based information. So let's have a look at that. And firstly, let's look at what we've got set up. So I've got here a few sites. I've just created four for simplicity, but you could have hundreds in your organization. And I've got a series of different project sites here, and they're all the same. They all contain three key lists. They contain a task list, where we've got a series of tasks with dates, assignments, um, priorities, and statuses. We've got an issues list where we're managing key problems around that project. And we've got some milestones as well, some, some key dates within our project. And those lists are replicated across 
my four different sites which I've got configured. The other thing I've done is to ensure consistency of those different lists, I've configured some forms with some standard fields and I'm using a content type here for each one. So for instance, with tasks, I've got a content type to, called project task. And I'll come back to that a little bit later on during the course of the demo. I've then got another SharePoint site, which is my sort of central project repository. And here I'm consolidating information from those four different uh, SharePoint sites in my use case and presenting note that information using the various Quizcom data apps and aggregation. So firstly, we see some tasks listed here. And this is my tasks for my project and we can projects and we can move between them. I can see the title of each task, who they're assigned to, the priority, um, and also which site. I've also got a series of actions here where I can go and view some more information about a specific task or even potentially go and edit one of those tasks and change information about them. I've also got a few other things going on. Um, I've got this little uh, highlight here, which you'll see against certain tasks. So I've got some conditional formatting, highlighting any tasks which are high priority. And I can actually just click on this and it will just filter it to just show me those high priority tasks. I can also do other things. I've got some searches built in here. So I can come in here and I can search by assigned to. So I could go, I'm looking for all the tasks which Joe is responsible for. And I can see his tasks. I'll also have a handy helpful menu here actually presenting me with the field options available. Same for sites, so I'm searching by my different project sites here. And I can actually go in and select multiple, so maybe I'm interested in one and three. And so it will just show me the tasks for those. And as a user, I've even got the opportunity to come in and save that filter um, now and um, as an admin, make that filter default for all the users. So very easy to search and explore my tasks. And um, with list aggregation in QuizCom, we can present that data in different ways. So here I've got my issues list. And in this case, I've got some tabs going along, breaking it down by the different sites. Notice even present me the number of items on each site. Um, this time you'll notice the format's a bit different, so it's presented in the list style, and I can configure what columns of information are displayed here. And again, I've got some conditional formatting to highlight any issues which are high priority. So presenting list information, presenting it from multiple sites, which is not, not there's not really a good way to do that out of the box, but also presenting this information in different styles and formats. So whether that's more of a tabular format, list-based format, tabs, groups, filters, conditional formats. And that's what it's all about, really simply and easily presenting this information on a page. Even date-specific information. So we've got the calendar web part displayed here where I'm showing my milestones from my different projects. And I'm just presenting them in a really simple month view so I can just see the key uh, milestones for each month. Really simple, nice way of presenting date-specific information. So that's how we can present information. How do we actually build that? Well, let's do it live. So first of all, I'm just going to um, remove my two web parts or a couple of my web parts from my page. So I'll remove my tasks web part and I'll remove my issues web part. So they're no longer there. And then I'm going to go and add a new web part. And actually, I've got quite a few set up on this site, but I've got the series of QuizCon ones like the Calendar Plus web part, the list aggregator, which we're going to use today, 
There's the org chart. And I've also got the Data View Plus, which is a combination of all of those uh, different apps, plus other features and functionalities, which we'll have a look at um, towards the end of the webinar. But today I'm going to use the List Aggregator. And I'm going to show you two ways of using the List Aggregator. Um, firstly, by defining the different SharePoint sites which we want to connect to and aggregating that data. And secondly, by using SharePoint Search. Notice we do have a few different other data sources such as Excel and connecting to the Microsoft Graph as well, which we've covered in other webinars. So I'm gonna start off by using the list aggregator. And that's where we can connect to various sites and build up a scope to aggregate them. Now it's worth saying that this method works best with when we're dealing with SharePoint subsites or a smaller number of separate site collections because obviously I'm going to have to go through and map the various sites but also from a performance perspective um, pulling data from lots and lots of site collections is quite inefficient but for the simplicity of what we're going through now it will do to demonstrate how this works so first of all I need to define the view of the data. I'm just gonna take one of my task lists and use that as an example for how the data should be presented and aggregated. So I'll just take my one of my project sites and say that's what I'm gonna use for um, the list view and the definition of my query. And I'm gonna make sure that I select my issues list. Notice I can base it on a specific view if I wanted to as well. Next, we need to define the various sites which we're going to aggregate data from. So in here, it's fairly straightforward for me to come in and define a number of um, sites. And this is what I mean where if you're having to connect to multiple sites, as a user, you're going to have to map all these in. Um, whereas if you were maybe working in a subsite model, it's very simple because you can base it on the entire site collection and its associated subsites. But we'll go through and just put in the various ones which we want to um, include in the aggregation today. So I'm gonna just enter my various SharePoint sites and I notice how I can define my filter in different ways. So I'm gonna base it on a list title. So in this case, issues, I'm gonna make sure I enable that. And you're already seeing I'm starting to get data in, so the issues from my first site. And I'll just quickly go through and add the other sites. I very simply named these so to make it easy for me to do today. Um, but you'll see already just going through and mapping three is uh, three or four is not the um, not something you want to be doing all the time. So let's just put in a couple more. Uh, so we get a bit of data. My third site. And I could base this instead of on a list title, I could be basing this on a um, content type, for example. And there we go, we've defined in four different aggregation scopes. And that's pretty much it. The web part's now there and configured and it's displaying issues from a number of sites. Now what you'll notice is, is all of these controls, these Lego controls are locked. I've got a few little options available to me for settings, but not many. Yes, each of these have their own controls and I can turn on or off certain things. But at this point, it's operating under a default mode. I can go and define which columns, for example, I would like to include if it's not displaying the columns I wanted. But this is this is op operating in the sort of basic initial setup mode. Um, if you want to get more advanced and customize that, you can very easily just switch to the advanced mode. And then suddenly we've got a lot more power available to us. So for instance, instead of displaying this data as a list, I can display, sorry, as a table, I can display that as a list. 
I can then even go in and configure things within this list. So I can go and say, well, it's displaying the title. And I could even then go and insert a specific column. And this is the things I love about working with the Quizcom tools is everything's got helpers associated with it. Everything's very easy to work with. So I can easily go and um, insert certain columns and uh, get additional information in there. So there you go. I, you'll see that I've inserted the priority there. I can also now start to build up the uh, web part using this Lego style UI. So maybe I want to display those tabs which we saw before. Can do that, that's very simple. We just click add here and then we get some options. So I can use tabs or I can use groups. So a bit like expanded collapsed items on a SharePoint list, we can do that as well. Let's choose tabs. And we can then define in the tabs well, what do we want that tab to be based on? And do you see here we get grouped by and we get all of the different columns available to us to use. So I'm going to use the site title because I want to break these down by my projects. And then I like to use this render as tab option just because it looks more button like you can see the selected items. Also, if you're not happy with the look and feel for these, this does support using additional CSS. So if you want to brand them, change the formatting, you can define your own CSS file um, to use against those. And QuizCon can certainly help with some guidance around those. Finally, let's have a quick look at the conditional formatting. So I can come in here and I can add the conditional formatting. And in here, I can add multiple rows to define the conditional formatting I want to occur. So very simple. I just click plus and I say, well, what do I want to do? I can either have an icon, I can color the text, or I can do background color. I like background color because it's visible. So we'll do red. And then I can say, um, well, how do I want this presented? Let's look at conditions. I only want it to occur when the priority is equal to high. Yeah, really quite simple to do, quite easy to highlight items. And if we publish this now, we can see that uh, I've got my issues list and you can see that that item there, we can see that that priority is high. And as I move through the different tasks for the different, so the different issues for the different sites, I can see those nicely colored. So very quickly being able to define that um, web part and present that data in different ways. Let's have a look at our task list example, and we'll use SharePoint search as a data source in this case. Much better when we're dealing with a high volume of separate sites, um, using something like the content type to um, search across all of those sites is quite an easy way of querying all of that data. And I'll show you an example of that. So again, I'm going to add the list aggregator. Now this time I'm going to use the data source type of SharePoint search. And here it's asking me to define a query for my search. And this is why I sort of planned ahead and thought about what I'm going to do. And I'm going to say, well, I want anything. because I've got lots of sites in my tenant, some of them nothing to do with projects. So I've defined a content type called project task. And uh, that will then allow me to query and return all of the items defined as project task within, oh, sorry, content type. All of the items defined with the content type of project task. Now, that's just the example I'm using in my scenario. And you can see I've got my items immediately returned. Now, the other thing I need to do is define the columns which I want to return because I'm using a search query in this this point. And worth noting, there's a few other options here, like using search scopes or specific resource sources, if you've defined those within search. We'll have a quick look at that in a second. I need to define the columns I want to return. So I want my title. I want um, assigned to. I want priority. 
And I want my site title as well, because that's quite useful for identifying which um, project it is. Now, how does all of this information come about? Well, let's just quickly go to the SharePoint Admin Center briefly, because you'll need to work with your admins to define the relevant and make sure that those content types and um, searches are defined. So within our SharePoint Admin Center, probably want to think about doing a couple of things. Firstly, you define those um, types of list which you're going to be creating. Now, I've used content types. You could do that in a different way, but I've just used some content types in my central gallery so that they're available across all of my sites. So, for instance, my project task here, here with my different columns already defined within there. And then fine. And then secondly, I've got my search to find and I've made sure that the different columns which I'm using within SharePoint search are mapped appropriately within my search schema. So either using standard fields or doing any uh, custom fields and mapping them to my search schema. So, for example, assigned to is mapped here with the relevant crawl properties. So that's going to return data in SharePoint search very quickly and efficiently across hundreds or even thousands of different sites. So that's what I've prepared in my search schema. And there I can enter my query text and my defined columns. Yeah, I need to use at this point um, the manage property name. And I'm now going to configure the specific columns I want to include. Now, I don't need to use this column, so we can uh, remove it. Um, I've already got the title column. So then I can add in any additional columns which I've defined to return by my search. So assigned to, but I can give it a friendly name because sometimes in a search schema, our columns are not got the most friendly of names. What other columns am I going to define here? Let's define my priority. That's fine. We don't need a specific friendly name for that. And then finally, I'm going to define my site title. Maybe we want to call that project. Notice when we're defining things, we can define what type they are. So I can go back to my assigned to column and define what type of column that is, or even my priority column and define that that was a uh, type of choice. Great, so now I've got my data returned and my columns. So a little bit of planning around how you deploy your different project sites, but you do that sort of thing anyway to ensure consistency around how your various project sites are set up. Next, we can start to customize this. Again, maybe I want to switch to the advanced mode and I want to start doing some configuration. Let's maybe give this um, web part a title. So let's call it tasks. There we go. And then let's add another piece of conditional formatting. Um, so this time I'll show you, for instance, using icons. So I can come in here and let's put the little plain icon. And there's various other options to like s to select an item, show it as new, for example. Um, but again, let's just do something where um, the priority is equal this time to low, for example. And we can see them neatly highlighted. I like the way it puts this little option down here so I can quickly filter. A few other things to show you. So you see these different options at the end, which we talked about, about um, doing certain actions. We can define those. So there are various item actions which occur and you can define how they behave. So for instance, this edit action, if we click on it, we can then define what it might be. Now, if you've got developers, you might have something specific and custom you want to do. In, this, in that case, you can enter your own JavaScript. But again, Quizcom make a number of standard options available to you, like email, um, opening a um, map, if you've got something which has a location, 
um, or even connecting to a video, for example. So there's some great um, native options built in to help you easily configure these actions. Now let's have a little look at adding a filter. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add the filter. And it will just start with a free text search. If you don't need the free text search, you can turn it off. And then you can come in and define, well, what columns do I want? Well, I'd like the project column. And maybe this time I'd like the priority column. Fantastic. So there's my um, configured web part. Super quick, super easy. I could now come in and say, I just want to see the items for a specific project. and very quickly apply a filter. So very easy and simple to work with. So, you know, really simple, easy to configure. Um, the other thing to bear in mind with these filters is um, you can pre-save them. Um, so if you want to just have a preset defined filter and that's how the web part loads and you actually don't let users change that filter, you can do that as well so you can pre-configure filters built into the web part. Now I'm not going to go through in detail configuring the calendar because um, it's a similar idea but in this case I'm using the calendar plus web part. And I just wanted to show you the fact that you get some additional options with this. So for instance when working with the calendar I've got the same data source options but I've got some additional mapping options. I want to map in my dates because they're important and they drive the calendar. Also itself, the calendar supports different presentations. So I can define the default start view, day, day agenda, week, month, etc. And I can also define what options people have to select. So if they want to select different, um, you know, switch between day, week, month, for example, I can give those options or not. I've turned them off in this example. We can use conditional formatting and filtering as well on this web part as well so to easily present calendar information. The other thing, you know, not solely related to calendar, but all of this different presentation data works inside of Teams as well. So if I just log into Teams, I've already configured the Data View app within Teams for that calendar control. In this case, I'm presenting it as a month view. That's that ability to switch easily, but really aggregate data from either SharePoint lists or graph data. Um, even from the Office 365 group itself and present it in a calendar and within Teams. That's actually really difficult to do within Teams. Teams doesn't have a good way of presenting data beyond your own calendar inside of Teams itself. But it's not exclusively to calendar. That other data which we configured around issues and tasks could easily be presented in the list aggregator view inside of Teams as well. Finally, before I wrap up and go to questions, I wanted to mention and talk about the um, Data View Plus itself. So the Data View Plus allows us to um, present and work with information in uh, you know, other data sources. Um, so connecting to the graph, presenting information from um, uh, all sorts of data sources. It also allows us to work with uh, data, which is, uh, and present data in a custom way. So not just limited to calendars, the org chart, list data as well. You can also create custom controls. And again, Quizcom makes some various templates available to you. So in this case, I'm using the risk-based template. I'm create, connecting to a SharePoint list in this scenario with some risks in it. Uh, let's just quickly show the list itself so you can see it. So either an individual list or aggregated lists with some key risks in there. 
And within the Data View Plus web part itself, I've shown you displaying data in different ways. So I've shown you displaying it as a table, a list, a calendar, but you also get the option for custom controls. And in there, Quizcom again make a number of standard controls available to you. They can also work with you on developing a specific control or if you have access to development resources, you can then also include and build your own custom controls. So being able to present data from various data sources in formats like this um, risk control or the list aggregation, either using SharePoint search or list data, calendar data. And that's what it's all about. And hopefully in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes, I've shown you how easy it is to build out aggregation and present that data in different ways. So just to wrap up, just a couple of quick things to summarize and an opportunity for any questions. It's easy to set up in Teams, as I've mentioned, or in SharePoint. You can connect it to various data sources. Aggregating data across SharePoint, as I said, via lists, um, search. We can leverage the power of the graph. We haven't talked too much about the graph today, but you could connect to user information, document information in OneDrive, for example. We've got that customizable Lego style UI to quickly build up filters, groups, tabs, conditional formatting. And we can extend that further with custom controls and actions, either ones which Quizcom make available or building out specific ones for your specific purposes. And with that, I'd say thank you. Um, appreciate your time and um, any questions.